All right, I'm going to show you how I use my uh, computer once I've taken the five exposures to create a HDR image. So I'm going to open Photomatix Pro there, as you can see. Load bracketed photos, and I've got mine in a folder called Processing. So these are all the ones that I'm in the middle of working on. So I've taken, as you can see, they've all got usually five exposures. Some have got more, like this one here with seven, depending on the images to, to how many um, exposures I take. So in this particular one, I'm going to pick uh, an image that uh, I took on the track. Uh, I haven't processed this image before, so this is the first time processing this. Now, when uh, when you use Photomatix, you'll see that you get some options. Now, if you didn't use a tripod, you'd click this box here to say a line. But I used a tripod. You'd remove ghosts if there was anything that was moving. I tend not to use this anyway. I like to remove the ghost later in Photoshop. Reduce noise. Uh, if it was a you know picture that I'd taken at night or you know towards night or very dark, I'd probably tick that. But I'm not going to tick that now. And chromatic aberrations, HDR processing tends to bring that out in an image. So if you're shooting into the sun with something uh, close to you, so in the foreground that has sharp edges like a tree or a bridge or something, um, usually I find that I need to tick that. But once again, that can be removed in Photoshop a bit later. So as you can see, I'm not ticking any of the boxes for this particular one. We're just going to hit reprocess there. So the program is doing its thing, merging those into HDR, and then I'll show you how I use Photomatix and all the sliders to get the result that I'm after. Now the trick with Photomatix that I find is just using Photomatix to get it you know, probably 80% of the way there. I'll just close this little box down here, we don't need this. Move that there into the middle. So you can see here, um, I'm just going to go to the default. So that's the default setting, so that they, it remembers the settings from the last time you used it, which is really useful if you're doing a panoramic stitching. So say you say, say you take six images for a pano to stitch together, then you just, I pick one image with the most important feature of that panoramic stitch, and I use Photomatix to process that one, and then when I load the next five lots of exposures in, or the lot next five of five, then I just process using the settings from the previous, and that way I know all of my six images before I stitch them are going to be exactly the same. And then I can use uh, stitching software to stitch them. So here we've got this image here, and Photomatix does a few funny things. It Number one, it softens things, so it tends to take a bit of the sharpness out of the image, and we'll fix that a little bit later in, uh, in um, Photoshop. The other thing is it can make skies look a bit yucky. Yeah, now, in this particular one, it's got a grey sky anyway, so it actually looks okay. Um, but you can see there's also a lack of contrast here. So what I typically do is I go over here to the strength and I make that 100 and straight away you can see that just deepens the image. I usually increase the contrast, the, the detail contrast right up, um, somewhere about there. And you can see, I mean, you can throw these around a fair bit. I usually just, you know, slide them around until I get something I like. You can see now that's really dark in it a bit. And if I look over here at my histogram, you can see it's all very weighted to the left which is okay, it's still, I'm not losing any light information, it's a little bit blown out here. Um, nothing major though, that'll be probably these little squares up the top left hand side. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to increase the black point, point. that's just to move that, it's going to move the histogram a little bit to the left, I want to be careful that I'm moving too far, because I'm also going to now hit the white point just to liven the image up, so you can see that's now stretched up, but I'm losing a lot of information there now, so I'll just drop that back a bit. And I'll show you why. I can actually use gamma to bring it up as well. Uh, once I've got that gamma up, I'm going to bring that black up again just to stretch it back. And really, I'm looking at the image to see what detail I've got and what you know what I'm after here. And you see this composition here. There's this old rusty beast here, and then there's the tracks. But the HDR here has done a good job. It's really you know allowed me to have underneath of this fairly much exposed nicely and outside of it, everything's exposed really, really nicely. Um, if we zoomed in on any part of this, uh, you'll see that it's not very sharp. And the reason for that is that the it was fairly windy. So whilst we're looking at the image, 
at this size, it looks okay, they're not very sharp, so I'll probably have to fix those up when I get into um, into Photoshop. You'll probably find there might be a little bit of uh, haloing around, something like that branch there. Not too much yet, I can probably push it to make it halo, let's push the luminosity up a bit like that. Um, you can start to see the halo, not so much in that zoom there, but you can see it there, so you've got to be really careful. And I tend to be very you know, conservative. The more you push this luminosity up, the more it looks like a painting. And I know I'm going to have to fix the sky anyway. So what I what I tend to do is I go, okay, well, what is the most important fact or the most important feature of this image? And to me, it's this old uh, carriage here and these train tracks here. So they're the things I want to really focus on making look good with uh, with my processing here. And so I you know I'll focus on making them look good. So I'm happy with the way they look, and the rest I'll fix in Photoshop later. So I've seen I'm really starting to get some nice detail. There's timber down here looking good, and all these timber sleepers look fantastic. Um, you know, I might bump that temperature up just a tad, a bit too much there. I don't want it to look too warm. You can see it's got a grey sky, so it's going to look a bit silly. Let's drop that white point down just a touch. I mean, you can start to see now. See my my histogram here now. I've, I've saved. I've now got a lot of the detail back. Uh, I need to pop that up just a little bit because there we go, drop the black down a bit. I'm just losing a bit of information somewhere. Just get the histogram to pop up in the middle there like that. You can see what's happening over here. This histogram is now if you've not used a histogram before, um, I suggest you get on YouTube and just watch a video or two on what they mean. Because it really will help you process your photos in a way that you've never processed before. And this one here, lighting adjustment is quite a funny one, you know, it moves the light around the image, so you watch on. Now that's really put the focus on this carriage, which is cool, and the tracks. And you watch, I'll move it to the other end, you'll see it'll light up the grey sky. There we go there, so really blowing that grey sky up. And that's not where we want the focus, we actually want it on the carriage. So I actually, you know, unusually like it right down there on the left hand. So I'm going to bring it off just a tad, uh, just to make it a bit more even. And it gives me a bit of this tree here. Um, let's go for about there, I think. Really like that look, which means I can probably drop back something a bit, it's a bit bright. Um, so I'm just going to bring the gamma back a bit, and maybe the maybe well, that's pretty good there. Bring that white point back a bit. There we go. See, I'm just moving them around just a little bit. Yeah, I might bring the gamma back up just a touch. So that's it loses its contrast when I do that. So you just got to be careful about you know just look at your image and what is it I'm, I'm after. As you can see, that's looking really nice now. I'm really happy with the way that looks. I will fix it, see around this, I don't know if you can see around this branch up the top here, the one without any leaves on it, looks terrible. Um, the sky doesn't even look that good. But don't worry, we'll fix that a little bit later. What I'm interested in in Photomatics is getting the parts that I want to look good, to look good. And so here I can see the train's looking good, The all the rocks around the sleepers here, the tracks are looking fantastic. And uh, you know, the trunks of these trees are looking nice, detail, and everything's looking, everything's looking pretty good. So. Where it is there, I'm going to hit process and let Photomatics do its thing. And it will create that HDR version for me. And then I'll show you the next step, which is to put them all into Photoshop as layers. So there we go. So then I'll just hit Command W on my keyboard and hit save. I don't change the name, I already named it on the track. And it does on track one, two, three, four, five tone map because on track and those five numbers of what my five original images are. So I just hit save and I'll save it in my file called processing, my folder processing and as a JPEG. So there we go. So save that in there. It'll close. Command Q to quit that. So I'll that's the video for using Photomatics and uh, I suggest now you can sort of watch the next video which will be on how to use Photoshop to finish the image off. Um, and uh, you know when, when I'm in Photoshop I might also use some plugins but it gives you a bit of an idea of what I'm doing so there you go